Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are back for the triumphant return of Entanglement, uh, which we just started playing just the other day. We're already two episodes in, and you can't prove me otherwise. Uh, as always, if you like what we do here and you want to support the channel, link to our Patreon down below. That's the best way to do that. Uh, also, join us on the Discord. Link for that down below. And as always, in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the corruption bar. That bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar fills, Gnome gets to do what the hell he wants to us, and it's terrifying. Two, is every single dollar that goes into that bar goes back to these amazing, beautiful faces you see here before you. That being said, I will turn things over to Gnome to take us back to space. Cool, I'll do that in a second. Hey, Mike, can you center myself and uh, Juan Carlos? <sighs> I guess. Stop putting us... <laughs> Why are you trying to put me in a corner, bud? Screen. Listen, I don't move the cameras. You guys move yourselves, okay? That's you, on you. What are you What are you talking about? I haven't I've been sitting here this whole time. Listen, that's the problem. You're just sitting there Tag pro in your streams. corner. It's like you never left. Well, I guess he's not. He, he's at least that professional, but not for this part. Yeah. Not for this part like whatsoever. No, it's cool. Hey. Sup. Welcome back to space. We're playing the Expanse RPG. I'm not prepared. Wow. I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna read this cut that I wrote last year. So, welcome to the future, and the next stage of human history, spreading out into the solar system towards distant stars. Welcome to the Expanse. In the 23rd century, humanity has long since left the cradle of Earth to colonize the solar system. Now, an, ind an independent Mars vies with the old Earth for political power and influence, while the settled asteroid belt and the moon systems of Jupiter and Saturn supply the inner planets with the resources they so desperately need. The people of the belt and the outer planets, the belters, labor and chafe under the rule of the inners, and unbeknownst to humanity, history is taking a most unexpected turn. We'll be exploring a moment when people in the right place, at the right time, willing to do the right thing, can potentially change the course of history and the future of humanity. Welcome to Entanglement. Now. I do, I do just want to say that Joey wrote that before we made our characters and didn't realize that we're the wrong people at the wrong time. <laughs> And Honestly, I don't think I wrote agreed. that. That sounds too good. I think that came straight from the book. <laughs> and then we got spaced. I'm pretty sure that came from like the book. <laughs> but yeah, I, I see. Look at look at everybody just talking about this this churn and burn. Oh my god! Already, yeah, it's all... already halfway we through. Not saying that like oh. stick notes is working on a on a space shanty called churn and burn, but I am saying that we are. <laughs> It's Wait, great. did we already hit the first bar? We already hit yeah. the first bar. And nope. this is halfway into the next bar? Yeah, oh, we, we haven't yep. even introduced ourselves yet. We haven't, even, we haven't even done introductions. This is, <laughs> no, no. I'm here for it. This is great. This is exactly what you could expect. Especially because, hey, it's been a year. We all need a little <laughs> refresher because none of us, let me tell you, cracked open this book from the last episode to today. Oh. <laughs> ready? I've opened the book now. So now we're ready. Here we go. Now we're oh. ready. No, yeah, most ready. of us didn't open it the first time. <laughs> That's yeah. also true. We are playing Age. The system, um, Green Ronin publishes this. And one of the really cool key mechanics uh, is what's known as churn. And there is this handy dandy churn tracker. And every time that our players uh, do something awesome they they actually like succeed on stuff um the, essentially the better that they do the more dangerous and deadly the world around them can and will become so last we left off essentially not only did we have corruption bars to spend, not only did we hit a almost cataclysmic churn event because of those corruption bars and because of the wild successes that our wonderful players were having, the ship, the shuttle, a vessel meant to carry people to and from Earth, Mars, and heading towards the belt, exploded. 
with everybody on board. However, there were and are survivors. We're going to go ahead and jump right in to space. That is literally, we're just going to jump right into space. There is silence. It's dark. Maybe off in the distance. We as viewers, as the camera kind of pulls back, we could see debris just lifelessly drifting through space. A little reflection from the sun as it hits one side of all of this debris. And there's a small escape pod, brightly colored in blue and white with yellow emergency paint all over it. Clearly a vessel of Earth, clearly an escape pod. There are little beacons. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Emitting signal. And on the inside, bathed in red light, we see and we'll meet our players. Let's go ahead and start off with Noir. Noir, who who are you playing? Who do we see? And how did you end up <laughs> escaping a deadly explosion potentially set off by the OPA? All right. Oh, well, that first, the first half of that question is easy because I wrote it down. Uh, Adrian is an eccentric earther. Uh, he wears his hair and all his hair in all sorts of weird, vibrant colors. Currently, it is silver. He is short and stout, uh, with dark walnut skin. Uh, he's got one brown eye and one blue. Uh, and normally at political functions, he tones down his looks. Uh, he dresses a little bit more casual. Currently, uh, he's just in like a comfortable like robe, shirt, and pants combo. Uh, and, uh, so after everything that went down, uh, I would say that the way that he was able to make it out was, uh, by doing some quick questioning of the people who were still on board, finding out, uh, where, you know, uh, emergency vessels or, uh, escape pods would be and being able to relay that information back to his group, um, uh, yeah, he does have a sidearm on him, but most of the hostile threats were taken care of, so he just uh, was able to scramble his way uh, through and to talk his way onto an uh, emergency pod if he needed to. Okay. And the camera whoo, whirls, and we look over to Eli. Eli, who are you? What do you look like? And how did you manage to escape on this vessel? Uh, Eli is a, we're going with a lot of eccentric today, uh, eccentric Martian. Um, mostly is, is kind of looks like he's been put on the ship, kind of like the way one would put like a dress up doll in like a, in a house. Um, he's wearing what is essentially, you know, a, a standard issue Martian jumpsuit that's like maybe a size too small for him. He's a little baggy. And so it does, it kind of hitches up around the arms and the ankles. Uh, but the noticeable things about him is that he's like beanstalk tall, um, in a way that might suggest if you knew what you were looking for, someone born in outer space, um, and not necessarily planet side, uh, but also, um, has what we've casually referred to as an anime villain protagonist, like antagonist raid hair, uh, rave hair, in that he's got fiber, like he's got sort of got fiber optic color extensions woven throughout his scalp and so they change colors and flicker uh, into different colors depending on his mood almost um and i think the way he got off of that ship was someone probably dragged him along because he wouldn't have gone particularly yeah it's probably kosh um who's dragged him you know to safety uh because eli was far more preoccupied with the tech things that were happening rather than getting off the ship because he has the self-awareness of a particularly dense brick That brick did not come from Mars, clearly. <laughs> Evidently not. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Kosh, the camera shifts over to you. Probably Who are you? What do you 
what probably doesn't ship like? that too much too much over him right next to to uh, <laughs> Eli. I'm sure <laughs> it does a full 360. Okay, no scope. Let's go. Oh, oh there we go. Um, so Kosh is a kind of a taller man. Um, now looking at his clothes, like he's got um, dark blue jeans and some old uh, mag boots and a jean, like a black jean jacket, just like this one, uh, plaid shirt. And um, like, just looking at him, you'd, you'd assume that he was almost like a homeless man, just based off his clothes. But if you look like, uh, look at his beard, he's got uh, darker skin than what it looks like now because this light's really washing me out. Um, but he's got dar- a lot darker skin um, and he's got a, a full like curly beard and he's got uh, medium to long hair combed back. But when you look at like the way he grooms himself and um, like his facial features and all that, he, he takes care of himself. It's his clothes that look really old. Uh, and and tattered and ripped up and and things like that um um, although he's a little over six feet tall um he definitely has the composure that kind of makes you overlook him when you're looking at him in a crowd or even with this group of four he's not the first person you'd look at especially with Eli sitting right next to him with uh you know the fluorescent hair um so as (laughs) Eli was saying uh I would have gotten onto this ship because um, both of us most likely would have looked through the camera feeds and uh, kind of like had the layout of the land. And uh, even though uh, Eli obviously didn't want to leave because he wasn't paying attention, uh, kind of forced him to go with me and, and we made it onto the ship together. All right, excellent. And Mike, the camera finally shifts to you. Who is Rex? What does he look like? And how did he get aboard this escape pod? He's he looked like a man. Um, Rex is uh, he is your typical belter. Um, he's currently dressed in a jumpsuit, uh, probably a little bit zipped down. The back of the jumpsuit has um, the insignia for what was it? The Compass Rose, whatever the ship that just exploded, because he was a worker on board the ship. Um, except now he's a uh, a tattooed uh, belter in a worker jumpsuit carrying a big ass rifle, um, and uh, he seems to know how to use it. Uh, he has the the shaved uh, side, um, he has that, he has the cool space hair is what it is. It's shaved in the sides and it's kind of like that f- sort of faux, faux mohawk, uh, sh- shaved faux hawk, if you will. Um, and he has a big old OPA tattoo that is quite visible that takes up the majority of the side of his neck as if he's very proud to be the OPA and does not believe one little bit that they were behind the explosion that just took place on the Compass Rose. Uh, but he does sit rifle uh, locked, loaded, and in his lap uh, next to Adrian Cox, who is the reason why he's on this ship, because after the death of his boss, Darling, uh, he was promptly hired by Adrian Cox to make sure that he didn't die. And uh, he's doing a great job so far uh, since Adrian made it onto the ship, and that's where, <laughs> that's where he needs to be. Can't confirm, not dead. <laughs> Excellent. Yep. I love it. I love it so much, you guys. All right. So as we are just floating in a tin can, it's been maybe maybe about an hour or two. And I, I'd like for you all to just have a moment to discuss amongst yourselves anything, something, nothing. Would you sit in silence together? Would you be trying to communicate with other pods nearby ships rock hoppers what would you be doing within this time no if i may please may. remind me we were on the ship uh adrian cox was an ambassador from earth correct darling was an ambassador from the belt correct. mystery person uh lady lady was a yeah. uh ambassador from mars mm-hmm. um uh, Mart- Martina Torres? That's the one. Was an ambassador from Mars. Um, she's the bad guy? She did something bad. Didn't she, like, work with the bad guys? Or was someone impersonating her? Yes. Someone yeah. was impersonating her. Um, it appeared to be a Martian Marine was impersonating right. um, are we, this senator. From... Are we able to get, like, a, a very tiny recap of what happened in the prologue? 
I mean, that would be smart had I prepared a proper one. Um, That's okay. I'm doing that right now. I was just sort of sliding in there, right? <laughs> we could yeah. we could try to piece it together together. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. so yeah, that's, that's what we're from what I remember, Maria Torres yeah. was being impersonated by a a Martian uh, uh, marine. There was also some people from the belt. I forget his name, but he's the one that killed Daisy and killed Darling. And there were some members uh, of the belt who had OPA tattoos who boarded uh, aggressively, uh, punctured the side of our ship, boarded it, uh, killed people, and then planted several bombs. Uh, we did our best to save the majority of those people, take out the majority of the uh, enemy combatants, and then find the bombs, couldn't get rid of them. I'm pretty sure uh, Adrian called back to, he sent a tight beam to somebody and was pretty badass about it. Um, and threatened people's lives and the lives of grandparents. Uh, and then we fled to escape pods and blasted out of the, I think it was like a big arc ship, uh, that, uh, and then it exploded. And we're just sort of tumbling in space with no real direction or a goal right the second. Yeah, because we had, like, we found, like, the real Maria Torres's body, right? She like, was she dead, actually, yeah. She was de dead, and then afterwards she showed up to, like, talk to us or say yes something. i forgot what yeah. it was yeah. then uh, her ghost showed up to talk smack <laughs> yeah. oh hello noir has yeah, got just, a book here we go <laughs> i just pulled up my notes so um so yeah the way we found out marina uh, martina torres was a uh uh was a double was because we looked at footage from her room uh right. i tried i attempted to send a tight beam to earth to explain what happened mm -hmm. uh instead i believe i got received a threat from what i believe is the opa that said message received okay <laughs> um so, y'all are crushing it with your notes like i'm i'm looking over mine right now as well and just oh, going just, over uh, these corruption bars oh, oh no. no oh no because because i'm gonna most give all that credit to happened, no, nor though yeah oh. yeah uh i've got a question oh. for you though no yeah what's um up? so i would like to kind of assess the attack on the ship um with like my knowledge of history of my background um and i have something that I can roll for it or tactics. So I'd like yes. to kind of assess the tactics of what happened so I can kind of maybe try to discern who it may have been or if I've seen it before. Okay. Uh, yes, please go ahead and roll your tactics then. All right. I don't remember Very if nice. that's good or not. Okay. Good. Um, You won't know. I set a, like a DC essentially and that if you roll above it, you succeed. And in this case, you do. You're you're familiar with the the tactics that were kind of used, although not not in a way that is wholly familiar um, as part of like your training. It's more that you're familiar with these tactics because you've trained against them. the The bomb explosions, the way that they were set up, are very much OPA style, although with the assumption that perhaps a Martian Marine was involved or just the Mars Federation in general was involved, at least the organization of taking out the ambassadors from each of the planets with the exception of the uh, Earth ambassador is a little too planned and a little too prepared. So kind of going back and replaying the events in your mind, it very much feels there was a joint effort here and that OPA more than likely was just being used as bodies to do whatever it was that Mars had intended. Okay. Um, I would definitely keep that to myself for now, especially looking at my company, present company. Is there anything else you would like to discuss while you where, are still just floating? Where were we headed? You were heading to Ceres. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. remind me, because uh, science, mm -hmm. how much uh, pilot ability do escape pods have? Um, enough. You, 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 can, you can move and rotate and start traveling. It's whether or not you have enough um, fuel and supplies to get to where you need to go. These, these are not rock hopper ships. Um, you're kind of a sitting duck 
Mm -hmm. uh, as far as an, it's just basic life support mm. essentially, but you are able to direct it, like direct a course in a head in a direction. And how far from series were we? Do I know that? Or would I, I would anyone know we that? Were, we were only like 24, 48 hours away. It wasn't that long. That's a long time in a, in a escape pod though. Well, it's going to be even longer in an escape pod. Yeah. 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 So, uh, what is uh, the plan? Out of this can somewhere, people don't want to shoot us. Seems to be a good first start. I look great over at Eli. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, he's, he was just going to say a great foundation to make a smarter decision for what we do afterwards, I think. Do we have a heading? I look over at Eli and I'll uh, and I'll kind of I'll just say it out loud, uh, hoping he knows that I'm kind of addressing him. Is this thing will this thing still get us to series? Will this thing get us to series? <laughs> um, we might not be alive when we get there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because like, like we're because we're factoring in you know oxygen all this stuff. Uh, is it what do I know that I think? Um, yeah, like... yeah, I, I mean. Yes, I, I was. I'm not okay. even gonna have you roll for that. Um, cool. Yeah, you, you know that this thing probably has about a week's worth of supplies, but based on the speed in which you are drifting more so uh, towards any type of destination, no, you would not have enough supplies to last for the uh, for the entire trip. I would assume maybe it'll take like two weeks to get there, but you only mm -hmm. have about a week's worth of supplies. Gotcha. We would have a very comfortable week before we got halfway there. Something tells me whoever uh, attacked the ship may also already be on series. So in uh, the meantime though, we float in space, yeah? Where are we going? It's me, bud. Noir, if you're talking to me. Uh, there we go. Uh, he, he just said, uh, well, if I'm to understand correctly, I believe that gentleman said we're heading, heading towards Sierra, so. But we don't have the uh, resources to get to Ceres right now. Well, what he said was that we'd have a comfortable week. We can try our best to ration out what we have, make them last as much as we can. No, I think you misunderstand. You said we have a comfortable week to get halfway there. And then we die. We run out of supplies. There's no... Well, what's the closest functioning location that we can go? Let me pull that map off. So can anyone read star maps? Um, I should be able to make heads or tails of it. Well, then I guess we are in your hand, Mr. Cox. Is there like an engine or like how, like what kind of shuttle escape pod are we in? Is it like a shuttle escape pod or like a tin can with boosters? It's it, because it's from Earth and this yeah. was a, um, a shuttle meant to transport higher ranking uh mm -hmm. diplomatic officials it is a bit nicer than just a tin can so it's it's very comfy inside mm -hmm. um you know the the temperature regulations definitely there's enough energy and resources for those um for like environment yep. um, adjustments um uh, but for like speed and stuff like it's just it's not meant to stay not in space, space for that long yeah, yeah even yeah. though it's nicer on the inside it's kind of the same on the outside gotcha and pulling up the map, just so you all know, um, it is about the nearest, because we were coming from there, the nearest known station from where you are at compared to Ceres uh, is Thoth Station, okay. which is in the belt. 
because you are headed you headed into the belt. You're yeah. kind of on the outskirts of it at this point. So while we make our way to the belt uh, and find a proper ship to take us where we need to go. Just Wait, like that? I'd imagine people on the belt like money. So yes, just like that. You would. Well, if you got the credits. You would imagine that, yeah. Uh, what do we have to go? You were going to Ceres for a meeting. Yes. Two of the people you were meeting are dead. Yes. A... So who are you going to meet with? If you don't mind me asking. I, I was sent to deliver a speech about the unity between Earth and the belt. Uh -huh. It really is just a fluff assignment. Uh, I don't recall exactly who I was going to meet there. I don't really run my own schedule. That was for my assistant's responsibility. So you don't have a destination? You don't have <laughs> a meeting anymore? You have a blown up ship? People yes. think you're dead? Mm -hmm. And you want to Except... show up anyway? Except whether, except that uh, he could have stayed dead, but he had to send out that message and it got intercepted by the people who wanted to kill him. Yeah, but then they blew the ship up anyway. They don't know we got off. They ping us before. Yeah, did we get after anything after, after the explosion? Yeah. Oh, after the explosion? You went, no, the explosion happened. <laughs> well, if they think that he's dead, maybe it's, it's, uh, the best you stay that way for now. That's what I'm now. saying. Why would we show up to series where you're expected to be, but also thought dead? I agree with you. So then the question is, what do we do? If we go to the belt, we can blend in. Well, some of us can blend in better than others. And he like kind of looks at Eli for a second. But even still, what is the plan? Plan is to get me back to Earth as soon as possible. It's the only place that I can feel one hundred percent safe, um, and I'll be able to d interact with our congressman directly and tell them what's been going on, so they're not hearing things through a game of telephone. So. Earth is the final destination, but to get there, I suggest that we go through the belt. I'll uh, kind of like uh, slump down like on the wall and sit down, put my arms on my knees. And uh, before I like tuck my head into like, like basically my arms, I'll be like, well, good luck with that. And I'll just tuck my head away like I'm like I'm done with the conversation. Yeah, boss man, that's not going to work. That's a one-way trip for you. You think so? What? It's a solo trip for you. I agree with him. You got me. I was leaving the Earth. I'm not going back. Yeah, I'm not coming. Paul Mang's not coming. He's not coming. It's just you. So what would you suggest? You are my bodyguard. I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, I know that I can't keep you safe on Earth. So you leave, that terminates the contract, and then I'm not your bodyguard. I think we find out who did this. You said that you three were sent here to talk um, uh, you said peace talks between the belt and the, earth. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and Mars. Yeah. In your loader, belt loader, peace talk. I get it. Yeah. But the Martian lady, some jokers that, uh, they look like OPA. Uh, why are they trying to kill everyone? Why do they want to talk to stop? What, what's the real talk? You said that was a fluff piece. But if that was fluff, what is the real talk? Oh, good questions for 
someone with the responsibility of finding the answers to find the answers to. Uh, we're not cops. We're not. <sighs> Look, it's already suspicious enough that I'm alive and the other representatives are not. I need to be able to explain that as soon as possible. I don't think. I don't You're think not listening to, to your bodyguard. There's a saying from back in the day, uh, dead men tell no secrets. With dead men in a can, you're not the only one that lived. You're dead too. Prove otherwise. You're the diplomat, but your bodyguard's a smart one. The oh, best way God. for you to stay alive is to stay dead. That's not a life. I understand that the rest of you are used to a certain degree of, I don't know, struggle. Being on the outskirts of things and, and... Look, we'll start to do it your way. If there's an opportunity to get to Earth, I'm going to go to Earth. But for the meantime, I think fleeing to Earth will only make it more obvious that you're guilty to whoever's looking. If your first act is to survive an attack between Martian and Belshan and Belt delegates, and your first act is to run to Earth in the wake of surviving, it looks bad. A diplomat surviving a massacre and returning back to his home ground seems strange? No, but it will to those who seek to find a meaning in there that you are not trying to give off. Uh, I could care less what they think as long as I'm not in their jurisdiction. Oh. I mean, See. if you're prepared for a war based on the consequences of what the looks is then by all means but uh that is the kind of option that will be taken so you're still thinking like a diplomat mr cox um right now well, you're a you're a you're a fugitive I... and you don't know who's after you if you have cards to play why are you going to play them all right now and i'll tell you right now you don't have any cards All the more reason to quickly return to the dealer, I would say. The person that deals my hand is located on Earth. Well, again, have fun with that. I'll look over at Rex. Do they have any good noodles on Thoth? We have the best noodles in the belt. Water, sir. But are those good noodles? I mean, better than you're used to. Water's a little noodles. iffy, but... Uh... I wouldn't have any way to judge. Um, <laughs> Fucking <think> Eli. <laughs> Eli is going to go try and see if there is any ways to... Like, if there's access to any kind of propulsion in the ship that he can go fiddle with, because... We've hit the point, I think, where um, he's not, he doesn't think he's has, he has anything useful to contribute. And if he can spend time tinkering with ways to get them to stations faster or quicker, that's his best use of his time. Okay. Uh, Eli, then, if you want to go ahead and roll me hmm, some sort of intelligence check, I would assume. Like an engineering? Yeah. Wow, it's almost like a click. <laughs> it's Funny. almost like a click. It's almost like he's trained. Wow. That. It's almost okay. like I have that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um yeah, I, I mean this is this is a standard issue escape pod. There are no fancy bells or whistles whatsoever. Um a child. 
from Mars would be able to figure out how to um, enhance some of the features in a vessel yes. such as this. So you are, it, with your calculations and with your kind of like, you know, snooping around, um, you'd be able to maybe push the limit a couple more days to get the speed, like reduce um, the, the reduce uh, the amount of resources required to enhance like a couple more days of your trip, um, but not enough to fully get you there. However, as you're kind of like tinkering around, um, there is this sound that is constantly emanating from uh, your ship and eventually it stops. It's a sound that it was kind of just, you were becoming numb to it because it's just, you know, it's that little beacon, that emergency beacon trying to broadcast out and instead you hear the comms open up oh yeah okay what you need a lift are these open comms like can anyone you're muted oh. joey yes you would all be able to hear it from the little hud um where like the control center is uh, I think Rex immediately like hits the button. Hey, Bradna, you coming our way? Hey, we're already here. We see you. Hold on, let me let me get fancy too. I can't be upstage by gnome. Oh, that's that's it. That's all I had. <laughs> hey, which way are you going? <laughs> hey, man, we're headed to Ceres. What what do, what are you doing in uh in the Earth ship? He immediately lets go of the comms. Well, he's uh, float around in space or head to Ceres. Well, it looks like we're going to Ceres. Don't tell them. Uh, hold on. Like, I'll, uh, I'll also stand up and kind of, like, uh, look over at Rex and I'll tell them. Uh, tell them our ship ran out of fuel. And then we had to leave or something, make up a lie. I don't know. What would be a good lie? I'm trying to figure out a good lie. <laughs> Group? Anybody? No. I mean, lying is sort of my thing. That's I don't really yeah. lie. I modify the amount of truth what is exposed to, and I don't think that we need to divulge any other information other than we can. Hit. You like either hear us from the back? <laughs> Elegantly cla- crafting truths. I feel, oh, I feel yes, like it's a business yeah, card. Yeah. Small shit. Cool. I feel like it's a small shit. Eli like perks up from like man, okay. the panel he's pulled off of the wall and is like, "Tell them pirates." That tends to happen out here. And it's technically true. You can see the anime nerve on Rex, but he he's not wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he, he leans back over. Uh, yeah, but uh, we, uh, you see, we had a little ship and uh, we got hit by pirates. I don't know who it was, but um, they took on an entire load. This is just us, the four of us. Well, that's most unfortunate. How about... Uh... How about you have any any cred? Huh? You it's can a, uh, you can take fuel, this feels expensive. Take this pot, scrap. Ah, come on! That's a nice pot. There's got to be something better. You can take whatever's on the pot. Let's hold on. <laughs> There, there, there's a moment of silence and you know like the captain of this this rock hopper um you know has like the comms muted and and, and the the crew is, are bickering back and forth to, to one another um and at this point now you could actually probably see the vessel um appearing in your uh vast viewfinder and it's it's a small rock hopper you are literally on the outskirts of the belt um and they are towing behind it um a large net full of junk full of rock um the whole point of being out here in belter space is to find as many resources as possible and that's what this little crew is doing um by the size of the vessel you kind of figure out that there may be maybe four to three people that could be on board comfortably. If they have more, it's probably not comfortable. It is a tiny vessel, but it, despite it looking like a junker, it is going to be able to actually make the trip to Ceres. Mipenza, you know who owned the ship, okay? 
It's you now. Get us to Ceres. Right. Take the ship. Do whatever you want. All right. Uh, prepare to be boarded. Uh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just get ready. Sit down. Hang tight. Hang tight. And uh, it'll it'll take a couple minutes for them to kind of you know approach and and get there. Um, uh, get their bridge prepped and ready to connect with yours. Um, is there anything that you would like to do or prepare for in the meantime? I just want to give Noma a shout out for his belter being um, uh, Watto from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Your Jedi mind tricks, they don't work here. Hey, you know, I can only do like three voices and they're just going to end up. Watto. Acting is hard, folks. <laughs> Right? Uh, also, Belt is I mean, different. Or, or is that really no showing us something that deep down, no matter who you are, you're a little bit waddle inside. <laughs> every, now and then, so you're just a, every now and then, you're just a blue winged capitalist alien. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, great. I, you know, I don't know. Sometimes, I guess. Uh, oh. You know, it just comes out. It's 2021. Anything can happen, y'all. <laughs> Oh no. You know what? Oh, no shame. Boy. Embrace your water. <laughs> <laughs> Cosplay 2022. <laughs> Get me some blue wings. Oh, please. Oh, please no. do that. Um and yeah, I like think, to prepare. You got I like five, ten minutes. Rex just kind of looks over and says, Well, I said that uh head into series was not the best choice, but it's better than floating around in space for days. We'll see. Yes, well, it's a good thing that I have a bodyguard. I believe that there may be trouble waiting for me when we arrive, so remember our deal. You keep me alive, and I give you a bonus if I accidentally shoot you. You understand. It's really hard to get paid if you die, so that's the plan. But my professional recommendation is still don't go flashing around any badges. Stay dead. I will stay dead then and he just like messes up his hair a little bit <laughs> he untucks his ascot we'll find it. i guess you lie from the corner like you look good for a dead man hey okay. i'll have coffee instead of that'll do it <laughs> if you a at elia just like kind of like looks at you like what and then goes back to tampering with the panel <laughs> well not now now remember not only does adrian look good you have on board an Earther and two Martians ish and an OPA. It may be a good idea to take a moment to consider your story. Just a friendly reminder this is a very political game. Rex so has a gun, Earther, he points and a shoots. Belter and two Martians walk into a bar. And the fifty dollars hit the turn bar, so it ain't don't fucking matter. Uh, <laughs> oh, All of a sudden, no. I, I think it'll be. I personally am totally in agreement for these four dysfunctional assholes to not talk about anything and then deal with the consequences of the turn bar when we walk into it. That seems I'm like the most reasonable. That's like yeah. I think that feels like the most expansive thing possible is everyone doesn't talk to each other and then they have to improvise badly. I was gonna be like, maybe Adrian could be pretend to be a belter, and then I remember that part where I wrote that he was short. <laughs> yeah, he also has a real fancy way of talking. I he can does. belter, blah blah. <laughs> just the so, most earth accented belter like it's like nah no <laughs> even eli's like what are you doing <laughs> so really i'll actually things. i'll actually stand up and um and i'll like look at cox directly and i'll say it's gonna go against every fiber of your being but you cannot talk to them let your bodyguard talk for you don't even call him your bodyguard don't even look at him Look at the floor. I can't help but feel like there's extra scrutiny on me, and I can't imagine as to why that that is the case. <laughs> We're <laughs> boss man. You joking? It. Are you talking to me, Rex? No, he's talking to uh, Cox. 
Look, I understand I'm the lone earther here and I have been in many a tense political situation before. I know how to handle myself here. No, no. I mean, you said there's intense, um, whatever that word is, towards you, specific. Mm -hmm. Scrutiny. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yes. Well, no. The belt hates you. Uh, They hate some earthers. No. No, they hate you. They hate they hate everyone. All of the in your lotus. You understand that our prime job is that we mine ice, bring it to you, and then you sell it back to us. <laughs> yes. It's we un- mine the ice. Take yes. it, bring it to you, and you sell it back to us. And yes. if we don't and we miss a shipment, then we you starve you. With we don't it. give you air, we don't give you food, we don't give you water. Because so that's the belt we hates have. you. Yes. And, and look you outside. look real nice. That's a rock hopper ship. They literally just mined it. They would hate you, an earthen, earther politician, more than most of the other, the rest of the belt. You look real nice. You have the suit, you have the... The hairdo, you have all this, you have a home, you know, they have this jumpsuit. And if they, and if they find rifle. out that you you started throwing money around and Rex jumped to help you for money, they'll hate him too. I do not believe that the belters are the animals that you're all making them out to be. And if they knew my politics, they wouldn't See, know that's that your I- problem. We're not calling them animals. You, you're you calling them animals right now. We're just telling you how the things are. Have you been to the belt before? I have been to the belt many times. Have you been outside of your bubble in that belt? <laughs> you, make a lot of, you make a lot of assumptions about me. No, I'm asking you questions and I'm looking for answers. And what exactly would my bubble be, sir? Your assistants, your bodyguards, your fancy rooms. Yes, I have lived without my bubble. Uh, I lived without my bubble while I was earning my bubble. And then once I earned my bubble, I don't have to not have it because I've earned it. You understand this. It's a general principle. And I believe that these people can understand that as well. I'll stay quiet because it's the smart thing to do. I'll stay quiet because it's the smart thing to do. A lot of talking to accept the thing that we all knew was a better idea anyway. Are we done? Do we have anything else we need to do before they get here? No, they're just going to scoop. As you say that, Rex, you all feel the ship kind of jerk um, and wrench a bit as uh, their bridge connects. Um, It'll take a few moments and uh, without, uh, they don't even bother um, asking you to open the door. Uh, The door just (laughs) opens up and there's this rush of kind of cold and dank air um, that hits you and swirls through the the escape pod uh still you are all bathed in red your eyes have had to adjust to this and as you look down the the tunnel of this small bridge um you're met with a a bright light um yellow in nature instead and you see one person standing on the opposite end uh in their door frame um who is kind of uh partially clothed in some like armor and some like exosuit kind of gear um, that is just kind of old and rugged and worn out. Um, clearly there are large patches that have been like resitched or, you know, pasted on with um, like a, like a glue to, to repair um, it, it's, it's old equipment. And 
he has uh, this, well, what would have been a mohawk um, is kind of flattened. He probably had only just recently come back in um, from having been outside in the vacuum of space. Uh, he has massive piercings in either of his ears that kind of lay agape. Um, he has bars through both of uh, the cartilage. His nose equally has a long um, cred stick uh, right right through the septum and there are just tattoos all over one side of his body um, most notably around his eye where there's a big o p a in bright red ink he is clearly not afraid of who he is but despite the physical appearance he has a bright beaming smile there's a couple teeth missing from his grin and he waves at uh all of you um oh yeah how you doing come on board the ship's still mine right and he oh, yeah. quickly picks out the other opa brother yeah, he definitely, like, Rex stands when the door opens, and, like, he has the rifle, like, at the low ready. Uh, and as soon as he sees that guy and sees the giant tattoo, he'll, like, crack his neck in a way that's obviously, like, him turning it and then slings the rifle behind him. For sure. Um, and then as soon as he asks about um, uh, about the ship, he just starts walking towards um, the, the gangway, essentially. And he, like, raises both hands and says, Hey, Bratna, yeah, of course, this is your ship. This is, um, this is first time on the ship. Got pirates. I don't even know the crew that well. Uh, scrap crew. Um, this is what's left. You mind if we bunk up? Hey, it'll be a quick trip. Uh, about, uh, about a day and a half. Come on in, come on in. There's, uh, nothing really tasty. It's all paste. Okay, come on. Get him. No, no. And uh, he kind of like flags you all aboard. <laughs> I think I think Rex takes one look at the fucking ragtag crew of cybernetic light hair, <laughs> <laughs> clearly an Earther, and then he's still unsure about Kosh, <laughs> and he just kind of <laughs> shrugs and begins walking down the gangway. <laughs> uh, do I notice any particular like look? Like, am I catching a am I catching a vibe? Are you ca um? Let's go. Let's roll. Let's let's roll. Uh, some sort of perception. I know I have a list of roll checks a here. vibe check. Yeah, please roll for vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a sixteen for vibe. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So, I I mean, ooh, one of those was a six. Is this 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 guy's? seems pretty chill and in pretty good spirits. You you can kind of maybe assume that not only do they have a good haul because he's got a big bright smile on his face but y'all just made his day because now he gets to take a shuttle scrap it and take all those parts pull the fuel from it use the rest of the fuel for their own ship and whatever else they need from it and then scrap the rest so he's uh he's feeling pretty darn excuse me good uh, right about now, even though he's he's taking a quick like glance, like he's you know he watches all of you come in because he still has to you know pull the bridge back in and make sure everything seals up proper. And uh, even as he's doing so, there might be a little hiccup, and the whole ship just kind of like you know kind of jerks a bit. Um, and he kind of just like punches like one of the panels, and then it kind of like do, 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 with the bridge withdraws back into the ship. And am I able to uh, while he's doing that? Am I able to like help him? Like, I, I wouldn't, like, say anything or ask him. I would kind of just, like, jump in and try to, like, lend a hand. Um. Yeah, as you as you go to try to, like, assist him, he, uh, he like, you you feel a slap to your hand. Hey! Hey, you don't, uh, you don't uh, touch my rock hopper. It's not yours. It's mine. I'll just, uh, I'll just, like, a, hmm, and I'll walk away. Just, like, acknowledge, like, all right, it's your ship, Leo. <laughs> I'll, I'll and, walk away. And and it is. It's a very small ship. Um, certainly not even nearly as cozy as the big shuttle you had previously been on. Um, there is like two hallways. Um, one clearly leads to like a couple bunks, and the bunks aren't even rooms. They're literally just um 
like little enclaves where there are bunk beds stacked up against a wall. Um, no privacy whatsoever, no doors, not enclosed. Um, down the other hallway leads upwards towards the bridge um, with one corner turning over to um, clearly some type of like mess hall but also down towards like the storage bay area it's a little bit of everything um and then up at the bridge though you are able to kind of see um where the captain of the vessel is currently sitting um their hair is shaved almost entirely except for the back of the head there is a long ponytail that is twirled in a bun and has just a giant like like iron spike through it, keeping it held uh, in place. Um, no facial tattoos that you can kind of tell, um, but a but kind of like a broad-shouldered frame in a uh, in a tank top, and they kind of swivel uh, in their chair, and it squeaks and creaks like they definitely need a little bit of extra grease in this thing. Um, but you are met with a broad woman who kind of like smirks at each of you. Uh, but she kind of ignores you for a second and looks over to her partner. Hey, Clash! What? You just gonna let these, uh, let these guys in? And Clash, uh, you know, looks up to her and, uh, just, hey, we treat them with hospitality. They just gave us this ship. We can't complain. We're gonna eat like kings tonight. Uh, and Rhoda just kind of lets out this, like, boisterous laughter and um, kind of like kicks up one of the joysticks from the ship, setting it into like autopilot, uh, you know, gracefully and boom, pushes up out of her seat. And as she stands, she's a good solid like six foot two. Um, she is wearing like padded pants. Um, she's got a uh, just a big knife, you know, dangling off of, to one side. Um, doesn't otherwise appear to be armed. But if you look at her arms, there are just scars and gashes, you know, old he all, all healed. Um, areas were clearly bone had broken and maybe pierced through um, that healed over not super well. Uh, but, oh, she is a big girl that you probably don't want to fuck with. But despite that appearance too, she also seems to be in good spirits. And Adrian, you would you would pick up on that um, as, as the two members of this crew just seemingly are just having a damn good day. They know they're going to be eating really well tonight because, man, the ship, it's great. So, of course, they're going to share some paste with you. <laughs> And the and Rhoda's gonna kind of like once again like just glance uh, over each of you. Hey, uh, which which one of you gonna give me the code so I can make sure that I uh, I put this in our name? Huh? I think Rex for a second like stops and like uh, Eli, can you do that? Uh would have been good to know that before we left the shuttle, but I can go back over and do that work. Oh, you okay. <laughs> and you kind of realized that was like a, are you able to do that question? E As Eli, opposed to like, <laughs> Eli has not. Eli has like I graduated past can you do it? And is like, yeah, duh. But okay. like you should have told me before we left. <laughs> oh, no, it's uh, in progress. Um, actually, um, I have something that would have allowed me to do it. Could I just like be like, uh, yeah, it's just ready for you to input it. Oh, oh, I could yeah, roll uh, for it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What, what do you have that allows us to, uh, allows you to do this? Cause we're Security. all still a little new to the game. We have a lot of folks who are new to the system yeah. and this game. So, so you're going to use security and do you mind reading the description of that? Yeah. yeah hold on. Uh, mm -hmm. well, no, yes, no? Okay. I don't mind, but I will. <laughs> Once I get the book open, okay, you cracked it open at the too. beginning and then I close mine. You know what I mean? So hold on. <laughs> Only uh, one book can be opened. We oh, are literally dude. passing a book around at this hold, table. Hold on, hold on. I, 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 can, I can do this. Just give me a second. All this right. entire party shares wood brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, it's pretty. It's like we actually have like one, one PDF. We can only open it at one time, at one at yeah. time. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it, it's we 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 can't play at a real table, so we try to like recreate that real experience of, of like, wait, who has the book? Yeah. Can you yeah. pass it over here? <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. No, can, can you stop down. using it? I need to open it. Hold on. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me close out of it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's not it. Uh, that's not it. Security was that it? No, no, no. Okay, that's the. I need to go down to the folk. No, the talent. I'm almost there. Hold on. I'm still scrolling. It's okay. I'm like, I'm going to go flip through my physical you got stuff. It. Okay. You got Security it? Okay. is a focus. Uh, yeah, it's a focus. And it says knowledge of different security devices, systems, protocols, and personnel. Unless that's not the real one. And Oh, and then I have to go down into talents. And that is, in a second, once I get down to the S's, R. All right. Rifle, scouting. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, it's just security. It's a it's a focus. It's your focus. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's let's go ahead and and use that. Do you do you already have that uh, prepared then? I do. Perfect. Yep. You you getting on board the ship. I mean, what else were you gonna do for the couple hours that you were literally just kind of like drifting a bit aimlessly? Uh, you're probably going to take a moment to just see what this thing had in it and and go over all of the systems and yeah you already have uh that information and can easily uh transfer it over to uh rota and clash okay so i'll just say hey it's just ready go in there and you don't need a code it's yours now <laughs> i like you 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 from you a martian there eh? It would seem so. It would seem so. All right. Uh, you, you, and he points to um, Adrian and Eli. You sleep over there, and you and you, so Rex and Kosh, you're going to sleep uh, over there. In this area of limits. Uh, it's mine and Clash. You got any whiskey? Where did he point to when he said it's mine? Um, just, is it just two other bunks? Yeah, yeah, just, okay. it's just two other bunks. Gotcha. It, it, there's there's no privacy, but like there there's two the like the extra bunks have like just shit, literally like taped to it, so it doesn't you know it's not floating around. Yeah. It's just secured. It's on the it. two that have the shower curtain. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, pretty gotcha. much. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, there's there's one that's very clearly lived in. You said a uh, day and a half, yeah. Yeah, if we push our luck, maybe just a day. Okay. Okay. It's better than floating around. <laughs> Anything's better than floating around. You're telling uh, me, man. <laughs> Clash I, I think, looks over to... Okay. He just kind of like sits down. And we're like on a box or something, he just sort of sits. And like, yeah, you there, hear the gun, the gun no, like, clatters against... Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gun clatters against whatever's behind him, a pipe of some kind. It's like mm-hmm. clank, clank. And he just sits and kind of slouches. I would have gone over to the cot and like jumped in already and like I'm already laying in there. <laughs> Claiming uh, <bottom> s- <laughs> So <sighs> so Clash kind of like comes and uh or returns anyways, uh, with a couple of like, you know, aluminum pouches and just kind of like floats a couple like four into the middle of the uh bunk area where you are all stationed. So if you wanted to pluck them from the air you are more than welcome to and you are currently just chilling in uh zero g right now i should have said that earlier um they need to wait a little bit (laughs) reserve uh energy um in order to add a little gravity to their environment i feel like uh rex reaches out immediately and grabs one of the things and he like unscrews the cap and he like goes and then he stops and watches to see what the others do. Because, like, he's used to this. <laughs> but that's, like, me being used to eating MREs and then watching a regular person try to eat one and go, Oh, this is going to be great. You got the eggs. <laughs> yeah, nope. so I would have done almost the same thing. Like, I would have, like, floated up probably to the top bunk. Like, kind of, like, you know, propelled myself and, like, grabbed one on the way. And kind of just, like... uh zero g put myself on the bed even though it wouldn't i wouldn't really be laying on it i would just be there kind of like uh laid out and i would also just like rip it open and eat it like it's nothing or like you know squeeze it in um adrian is 
not having a great day. <laughs> you don't is, say. He is pawing oh. at this ration like a cat. <laughs> still holding on to like the bed because I, I, I don't want to let go because who knows what can happen. <laughs> this not having gravity thing is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of my favorite mechanics as a belter is that I'm just trained in zero gravity and microgravity. So like I'm just like fucking god damn it. <laughs> oh my god, it's just <laughs> you could gravity's everywhere, y'all. <laughs> just in case we didn't know this. Um I mean not in space, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like being born in gravity is such a flex. <laughs> in this world. Yeah, like, we really, know. It we really know. Is. <laughs> it really is. Oh, it's like, oh, y'all can't afford gravity. Damn. Listen, we can barely afford water. Never mind gravity. Oh. Like, fucking, we can get our priorities right, my guy. Like a whole planet you have. Yeah. Um. Oh, so I'm just floating in poorness. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! <laughs> oh, sweet God. Yeah. Uh, you remember that time that he said, guys, I feel like Adrian's under way more scrutiny than... You <laughs> didn't <laughs> uh, uh, cinch that ass no. up, I'm right? trying to get my humble snack. Ah, <laughs> like... uh, yeah, space Lunchables. <laughs> Jesus uh, fucking Christ. I definitely, like... You can't really see from where I'm at, but I'm definitely smirking, like watching him struggle. Uh, conversely, I'm just watching quotes be put in. Sorry. Yeah, I feel like what happens is this all happens, and then kind of off to the side, you just hear an owl as the ration pack that Eli did not notice and did not realize was floating towards him smacks him in the fucking face because he was too busy reading something on his glass to actually pay attention, and then it just hits him, and he's like, "Ow." And then ignores it again as it like floats off in a in a random direction. That sounds and right. Flash just laughs. <laughs> just like, <laughs> uh, you're funny. You're funny. So, uh, what do you do out here? You you just uh, on a little cruise? It uh, no ship. I sign on as guard. Turns out I'm the only one that was worth a shit. Look at the company you keep, man. It's, it's the three bodies I grab. <laughs> and he like shrugs and like puts a hand out towards everyone. And Eli looks up and says, he didn't grab me, Kosh did, and then goes back to what he was doing. Still pawing at it like I'm in a Meow Mix commercial. <laughs> in the corner of like the bunk, I'll like uh, mutter out like, yeah, we owe Rex our life. Hey, oh, oh. Yeah, that's, look at you. That's too and much. Like, Clash kind of like nudges your uh, like your shoulder. Hey, just the regular belt a hero. No, 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 You're gonna no, get no. Uh, good reward. No, just a regular belt. That make us hero. Uh, I mean, Dash. you did save us, so we did. I mean, if it makes you uh feel good, Brana, you're my hero. <laughs> Brana, that's right. <laughs> And he kind of like raises his paste yeah. Capri Sun to clink it up. His paste Capri Sun makes it so much grosser. <laughs> do you, do, I am now picturing, do you remember like when Capri Sun had that the little like screw top thingy it, well, Not just, just the yeah, screw top, yeah, right? Yeah. But like, like there was like a mold issue. Like some of them were like, yep. like it was this whole thing on the news where like you would put it in and just like, oh god, there's just mold, like a sludgy mold. That's what you're eating. It's like toothpaste, and it's like pink the for worst. no reason, like, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. An unnatural. Wow. In my in color. my in my mind, I just imagine the the, the food looking like Rice Krispies. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's like a Rice Krispie slush. Yeah, mm. it's like if you took an appropriate size like bowl of Rice Krispies and milk and then blended it, so it's nice and goopy like oatmeal, and then forced it back into a, a toothpaste tube. Yep, with like a drop of red dye. I'm gonna go back to pretending that this is a Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's okay. a Rice Krispie treat in the in the same way that like in Snowpiercer that was a Rice Krispie treat. Uh. <laughs> wow. Wow, Mike. Wow. I'm, so glad, I'm so glad I didn't see Snow Pierce. Yeah, when you do, you'll go, oh no. Yes. <laughs> okay, we've got an okay, please update the CW yep. for food horror. We definitely need to update. I feel like that's fair, uh, food. honestly. Food is, food is a good thing. We'll, I we'll really want a Rice Krispie right now, and I'm not even playing. <laughs> it does sound pretty good. All right, that's so true. back in space. Yeah, he just eats the tube and watches watches Cox fumble with it. Is uh is it kind of like a dirty like ship? Like is there other empty food tubes just floating around? No, there there so uh, despite how like rusty a lot like it is just an old beaten scrap together ship, but it works. But everything is also actually pretty well kept everything is in a okay. place that it should be in um it's strapped in there's nothing there's no debris that's just kind of floating um you'd have to be an absolute buffoon to not strap everything down because the minute that you start moving at different <clears throat> speeds uh we can't forget about uh the laws of motion uh you might be in motion but if something wasn't uh oops that can go right through you so they seem to be a smart crew, or at least well aware of how they should be acting and surviving in space. Yeah, you know, I'll just put my little empty food tube in a pocket, in my pocket, until I find a trash can. So, so Clash is just kind of like hanging out with uh, everybody, and, and Rhoda's up uh, back in the cockpit, um, boots, you know, clink, clink up uh, against the dashboard. Um, as you are all headed now towards uh, Ceres, and uh, Clash will, Cl Clash wants to know. Cl Clash is just eager to learn anything and everything you guys will tell him. He's asking the most like ridiculous questions especially from the non-belters where did you grow up what's the sky like is it really always blue does rain really taste like pee like just bizarre questions that an excitable oh. belter maybe was interested in oh no rain tastes like uh just regular water There's a moment, I think we're like, <laughs> we're, we're both. Everyone just looks at <laughs> yeah, you like, uh -huh, what does water taste like? <laughs> I, <laughs> I just realized that when he said it, like, yeah, both, Rex, both Rex and Crash Ew. kind of make eye contact, and you can tell they both want to ask what's regular water taste like, but neither one of them do. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, this ought to be good. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be like, oh, this, this is, is what you wanted, Noir. You said, let me play the, the rich so senator. Rich. <laughs> he like throws the food oh. tube. Oh, this is what you people eat. <laughs> I, I, I never I'm knew what it was like the whole privilege. I'm floating in poverty. <laughs> <he says. laughs> Jesus. Dead. How? <laughs> Welcome to 2021. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we put the show on pause. We decided we couldn't do this show in 2020. It was too. <laughs> it was already it's too much. A good idea. <laughs> it was it's too much. A good idea. Oh lord. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm clamped now. Y'all got me laughing too much. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Couple deep breaths. You got this. Oh. I love it. But also don't because God, we need the laughter so badly right now. They're I'm professional role players, guys. Super professional. <laughs> hey, you, this is a beer and pretzels table, right? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, on brand, UMG. Big facts. Oh, Lordy. Your yeah, time... I, Rex just stays oh. quiet this whole time, I think. Okay. Uh, at some yeah. point, I think if Eli's, Eli has tuned out the conversation at this point, because I feel like 
<laughs> Adrian's doing enough drawing the heat onto himself with the questions and the answers he's giving that Eli has sort of tuned out the whole conversation and is mostly listening to the engine, I think. Um, and trying to see if there's anything off in it, like maybe something's not running the way it should or if there's anything that's more, that could be... <laughs> that could be optimized in the time he has left to just to, to do something because like Eli, I think feels a little bad that they had to pick them up and then like, they got this ship and stuff and that's cool. But like Eli didn't care because that ship wasn't his as far as he's concerned. Um, but being alive is nice. So I think he wants to give them something. And if that's tuning up their engine to make it run faster, he's fine with that. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, as, as you're kind of listening, um, I'm going to keep going. I mean, you had a 20 on that engineering score i'm just gonna keep rolling with it that's a that's a damn good score um yeah you it's this engine is absolutely not optimized uh you Mm kind of get the hint that neither of the two on board are engineers themselves but they certainly know how to repair uh in an emergency situation and they've clearly been in a lot of emergency situations so oh. you you hear it kind of like puttering and there might be like a couple stalls and maybe occasionally like rhoda like kind of like sits up because like oh wait hang on is it are we gonna are we going dead are we going nah, nah. Nah, all right there it is and then just kind of like sits back down and relaxes once again yeah i think after and, like uh, the three or the third or fourth time that they've like perked up and been like are we dying like is the engine dead no we're good okay eli kind of like gets up and floats across the space to the bridge and then stops at like the stairway and then just kind of knocks on the st- on the banister oh yeah welcome and good your engine is cycling wrong after like a brief moment of very clearly he has no idea what they just said. <laughs> Your engine is cycling wrong. Uh, what, what is wrong with the cycle? It's doing the thing. It, it rotates, it puts the, out, and the we every, go. The every five minutes where you sit up to wonder if your engine is about to die because it makes that sputtering noise and the lights flicker. Uh, I can fix that if you want. You can fix uh, how much? No charge. Well, go make yourself useful then. Two bucks right over there. And she points to the wall. There's like red duct tape outlining, you know, this like yep. dented box of tools. Yep. I think Eli like gets to the point where like he tries to like he goes to open the box and they like maybe the cover is slightly dented so it's jamming up a little bit. Oh yeah, totally. And then he like looks at it and then just kind of floats over to co- to like Rex and goes, "Can you pop this open?" <laughs> he like <laughs> he like he like motions for him to like throw it across to him. Yeah. Uh and then he just sort of catches it and like knocks it against the wall. Uh and you can see like dust float off the little like latch on it. And then he just sort of like hits the latch and opens it up and then closes it back down and relatches the latch and slides it over. Um, yep. so the tools don't fly everywhere. Yeah, and so once it once it, like when it's all, when it's midair, Eli like pushes off and sort of snags the toolbox on the way back towards the engine and says, mm-hmm. Call me if you need anything. Though I don't know what you'd need from me as he vanishes. Oh yeah, dang. Good luck. He thinks he's gonna Could fix just that old junker. Just sit. That's all he had Don't to do. Think. Sit. No. Just sit down. Let's out. hang out. All right, <sighs> Eli. You want to go ahead and give me a roll? Let's yeah. see how well you do. Let's do it. Uh, where the hell is the roll twenty? There it is. Okay. Sixteen. We'll take a sixteen. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain to me uh, how you start? repairing this engine so i i I think eli is fully aware that like if you you can't really tune this up to perfect right like it needs part it's going to need parts it's going to need replacing it's not the most amazing like fixed job on the planet um but eli has really good hearing and is getting really annoyed at hearing the cycling like sputter every now and then um and 
the fact that their their pilot slash ca- their pilots slash captains keep getting distracted by the engine the engine threatening to implode on itself uh, is probably not the most optimal thing to get them to where they're going on time and paying attention. So I think he does just enough sort of like repair work that the engine doesn't sputter uh, and it doesn't cycle nearly as loudly and that the lights don't flicker as much. And it like just enough to keep it out of everyone's periphery that it functions without everyone suddenly being aware of its imminent mortality. (laughs) That is a beautiful thing. Uh, I would say with that role, you have gone ahead and allowed for everybody tonight, um, unless there's anything that y'all would like to do um, to actually have a, a quiet, restful evening or whatever evening is when you're floating in space. Would it be plausible for me to, while everyone's asleep, uh, sneak back onto the other ship? How would you how would you want to go about doing that? If you recall, um, activating the uh, bridge attachment um, was very noisy and it jostled the ship. And right now the ship is currently just hooked. You're basically towing it. So if you wanted to go out there, you'd Make have to go out there. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to his bed. All right. Uh, anything else anybody want to do is y'all get kind of nestled in in your bunk areas for the night? I'd actually not go to bed, I'd be honest. Uh, I would be, I would look like looking at my body, you'd look like like I'd be asleep, but I'd be wide awake. Okay. Uh, which one was asking questions about Earth? Clash. Clash. The, I'd, the, I'd prob- the tattooed guy. Yeah, I'd probably... Uh, Go, are there any other questions that you want to know? It just give him all the stories. Oh, that's wonderful. So then I, I, you know what? How about you go ahead and roll me? What, what, what's a let's let's roll a social skill here. I know, right? Uh, let me pull this up. Would that be current affairs? Yeah, let's go ahead. I like that. Let's do current affairs. That can actually tie in pretty nicely. Ooh. Dang, y'all. Wow. wow. I didn't come here to make friends. <laughs> I came here to be America's next top model. <laughs> Jesus. So you mean you came to make friends? <laughs> Oof. All right. Well, hot diggity. Yeah, so the two of you end up having like some pretty great conversations um as soon as you kind of start like actually answering questions from you know from earth um about all sorts of things the sky the weather the the way that air blows you know things that just don't exist in the belt unless they're manufactured and even then they're nowhere close to the real thing that is the gem and beauty and privilege of living on a habitable world that just doesn't exist in the belt. It doesn't exist on Mars unless they make it so. And he is this all night. He will keep you up all night and he'll talk to you about it. He wants to know more about Earth. And as the two of you are kind of talking he starts bringing up the excitement about, you know, hey, I hear that, you know, th- you know, everybody's kind of talking about this, the summit that's going on. You know, you got the Mars guy, you got the Earth guy, you got the Belta guy. They're all going to talk. They're going to make mining better for us. New negotiated contracts. We're going to get all the money. We're going to get the water. <laughs> and, and like, like, he's just, he's hopeful, which is yeah. very just not common um for most of the of the belter folk it's just not a common thing that you run into um but he almost really wants to see this deal go through 
Yeah, I, you know, and I, I kind of feed on that because this is this is exactly what I believe that Earth and Belt can be. Like, I like this. Yeah, and 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 so I I think the two of you, unless there's anything deeper that you want to kind of like ask of him, you better um, not Daisy Clash. You hear me? You I just put it, <laughs> it, put it in the Twitch chat. It's gonna happen. Clash is dead. Um, <laughs> No, we have we haven't seen the turn yet, so yeah, yeah. We um, haven't seen like, the wait, I'm really enjoying being around Clash. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah. No, Adrian's like, it. I'm really privileged and rich. What's he's gonna kill everyone Adrian likes? Kill everyone Adrian meets <laughs> yep. who has hope and will ruin his whole goddamn hey, career. Noir, um, are you having fun? Cool. <laughs> I just Great. remember I just remember what game I played. <laughs> Hope is a death flag, Noir. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, now that we all know there's definitely a death target on top of this guy's head, um, y'all are able to sleep through the night there if you so There is one thing I'd like to do. Oh, so that's cool. Yeah. P- please. Because uh, G pointed this out, and I didn't want to double back to it. There was, at one point in the last in the first two episodes, a message from a modulated voice that came in a response to uh adrian's message uh, adrian's type email and we got it and we didn't know who it was from uh necessarily i oh i'm sorry yeah go go for it what oh no no you're right you're right yeah go ahead elio like elios eli recorded that message and has been spending a good chunk of the processor power in his inbuilt to cracking the encryption and the and like reversing the modulation on the on the audio um, and I think the reason why he offered to go to the engine room, besides all the things I mentioned before, is it gives him a place to do that quietly without anyone really checking in on him. Okay. So, why don't you go ahead and roll me... It's got to be like a hack. Yeah. It's How about some hacks? Common intelligence. I don't actually have hacking. Yeah. So hey, uh, hey take, a look at, take a look at chat real quick. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> we're all left out we're all like quietly reading it <laughs> yeah thank you so yeah exactly. look there might be little details that we forget because this was a year ago okay <laughs> how do you remember this uh because she watched the show it, so thank you so thank people, you so much people she were like we're gonna rewatch it. the show because we're really excited and all five of us were like we're not gonna do we're that not, we don't need that have, we have <laughs> time for that i don't know i'm gonna watch it this weekend and take better i mean i do have notes i've got five pages of notes from the last two games which is five pages more notes than i've had ever in the any only game. reason so. i i remember this existing is one because it popped back up a twitch chat but also because i've been waiting for you to, for you to use this goddamn voice modulator for a few I years no know. <laughs> it's sitting right here it's been yeah. here for this so, whole time to sit yep it's just hit there the button yeah we got here 17 to crack that thing 17 to crack that thing hey g do you remember who sent it <laughs> It was apparently from the boarding ship, question mark. <laughs> I don't think you said who said that. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't, I don't remember. I honestly, I don't remember. I, I have a suspicion, and I think it's somebody in my 54321, but... I, it I... may be. <laughs> There's well, I mean, I don't think remember. Eli would know who it is either. Eli just wants to crack it and reverse it back to its original voice so he can play it back later and see if anyone recognizes it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he doesn't know what it is anyway, but he's just like, I think so, you know, every, like you can sort of framing framing the scene wise, you have sort of Eli sort of floating next to the engine, kind of tinkering with it. Mm-hmm. And between like the, the clangs of metal on metal and tool on engine, you can hear, you know, like uh, Adrian and Clash, Clash's voice kind of floating like kind of it's like bouncing up and de- bouncing down the hall um and in a point i think where they get to like a particular like actual like it sounds like they're getting along well enough there might be some laughter going on in there and some story some of the stories and during one particularly sort of uproarious bout eli just kind of goes sid how are you making progress on that progress at 47 percent can you play me back the play me back what you have? Playback now. And you hear like do 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 do. Yeah. And you'd be able to hear the message once again. 
Yeah, and then I think Eli goes, well, I don't know who that is, and then goes back to fixing the engine, uh, and then we'll pr- bring it up later. <laughs> and I do, I do. I found the note. I have a note. Good. So that refreshed my memory. Thank you, G. You're Yay. the best. <laughs> Thing. How did GM? I don't know. <laughs> Let me do make this. everything up and let your players remember everything. That's what, that's, that's, pr- that's. I mean, the real that's thing. how that's the real right. That's how you do it. <laughs> I came into this session super prepared. I'm like, hey, I've got a sentence written. Great, <laughs> perfect. Um, yeah. So the night passes, and um, anybody want to wake up first? Do, do you have like morning rituals that you want to go through? Because otherwise, uh, Clash and uh, Rhoda is actually up. Um, bright and early. She's the last to go to sleep and the la- and the first to rise. Otherwise, if not, she will... Rex is a light sleeper, but he's a stay in better. Uh, so he's in wherever he fell asleep, but as soon as there's, like, noise on the ship, like, one eye opens and then closes back and he, like, stays laying back where he was. So he's yeah, like he's, he's like audibly aware of what's happening, but isn't getting up. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kosh already wasn't going to sleep at all. Like he was just going to pretend like he was sleeping. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. So so Rhoda is up and just moving around, not trying to be quiet. This is her fucking ship, and she doesn't care. Her routine. Um, you could kind of hear the sound of like. It's not a coffee brewer because coffee is a luxury that they definitely can't afford out here. Um, But there's some type of hot water that's starting to kind of, you know, boil up a bit. And um, she kind of like flicks on a couple of lights, kind of switches over um, some panels here and there, does like, you know, like hits a big button that's basically just like... um, like a systems analysis to make sure that everything was okay. And up on this like little LED panel is, you know, arriving to series in two hours. Um, and she just kind of like sits back down in the captain's chair. The squeak of the chair alone is probably loud enough to wake everybody up uh, as it echoes and reverbs throughout the tiny tin can. Oh, God. Again, is one gra- eye. Is, is the gravity on yet? <laughs> uh, no, we're not the gravity yet. It's we got two hours. You're yeah. fine. Get your space legs. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we just appreciate like Cox laying? horizontal or a mix of horizontal with just a blanket over him just floating above a bed because he couldn't figure out how to get into the bed <laughs> that's exactly yep. what the fuck happened this is ridiculous <laughs> he like goes to roll over and just roll outside of the car <laughs> Could I like uh like float down from like my bed and then go over to Cox and be like show him now that he's like done sleeping, show him how he should have gotten into bed. <laughs> like uh yeah, for next time, just here are the straps. Thank you. This time I won't wake up <laughs> somewhere else <laughs> with my with the sleep in the bunk and I won't get the cafe. <laughs> hey. What did you think those straps were for? I don't know. I mean, I'm open minded. I think he just swats <laughs> Eli the, the the pace that bumped off Eli. He just swats it towards the door so that it floats <laughs> back towards Cox so we can have breakfast. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Cox is just gonna go back to just being in the background. Trying to figure things out. <laughs> People are having conversations. Cox is floating by upside down, still pawing at this fucking photo. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Y'all. Did you grab the paste, Adrian? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. 
it, it's not gonna go floating and hitting the captain in the head starting with some sort of incident <laughs> <laughs> And and Ro- so Rhoda is just kind of like guiding the the ship, and and for the next two hours, um, you are able to have another quick space Capri Sun meal, um, and the water that was boiling was certainly not rainwater or regular water. It was some type of water, maybe a little yellowish in appearance uh maybe a bit more um alkalytic uh than you're used to and uh not super tasty but it's water and it's relatively refreshing especially being in the dry air of this ship this rock hopper and if you were to look over towards the bridge where the viewfinder is wide open you can see um the crest of Ares, large and approaching this um this moon that pull this up oops nope don't refresh don't print don't print the map oof oh no cancel just it's fine i got it <laughs> don't print the map This big rocky surface where um, inside as your craft is starting to make its descent essentially and orbit the planet, um, you hear uh, Rhoda uh, asking questions and and communicate essentially with um, uh, the station there, allowing them to uh, get access to docking, telling them where they need to go. They have this massive delivery. So you are going to essentially be swinging over to like the service entry location um, docks. And just for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and land there. Um, no incidents, no nothing. Just for the sake of time, the station explodes. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, Next, just yeah, like... you know, I'm just <laughs> anything that you look at, it's exploding. How many how many objects in space can we blow up? A lot. This There's a lot of oh, objects in space. Uh, I love them. <laughs> yes, yes. Adrian Cox loves them all, so they must all <laughs> die. <laughs> look this, at that, this rock. poor man. <laughs> bad. Oh. So bad. Um, but yes, you are um, able to hop off the ship. There's a couple security guards there, um, more like OPA uh, enforcers uh, rather than um, anyone from Mars or anyone from Earth. Um, some of them are kind of covered in tattoos. They're they're a bit sketchy looking, and they're talking with Clash and Rhoda. And um, as the two of them are kind of like starting to, you know, piece by piece, itemize everything that they hauled, tossing it into like this big dumpster looking thing so that it can eventually be weighed and shipped off. They're going to get their creds um, pretty quickly in that manner. What are the four of you up to? As soon as we land and like the door opens and they kind of start, you know, taking care of their inventory. Like, I would have just, like, if I would have saw Eli, I would have just given him a look, but I want to just leave. Like, I want to just walk away from the group. I want to walk away from the ship and try to, like, blend into the crowd and most likely make my way to, like, any place that, like, sells, like, clothes. Okay, I'm so sorry. I coughed and I missed that last word. What was the last thing you said? I'm just looking for like uh, a place or like a kiosk or a shack that may like sell hats and accessories, I guess. <laughs> like a souvenir shop? I just I'm looking for a hat and maybe like glasses. Something to <laughs> you know, a disguise store. No. Oh, a disguise yeah. store. Yeah, a yeah. disguise shop. He's trying yeah. to get that, TV. He's trying All you to need get is that a Marvel disguise. Yeah, yeah, yeah just need a Marvel disguise. Yeah. To be fair, a hat would work really well for Eli specifically. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, or a hat or some sort of hood. Um, yeah. Before we go ahead and try to find this shopping mall that you think exists on series, um, I'm going to go ahead and read you. Oh, can a I get a whole about... shop? I'm going to get a whole shopping mall. That's awesome. I'm going to get a whole, a whole shopping, shopping mall. mall. Nice. Um, Looking for the sunglasses. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible 6 million people are permanent <laughs> residents here. So this is yeah. this is a huge station. Um, Ceres is the largest known asteroid, the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system, and the first asteroid discovered by humanity. 955 kilometers in diameter, the now hollowed out asteroid houses Ceres Station, one of the first sites of human colonization. Half a generation after the first settlement, the venerable Tycho Manufacturing Corporation spun up the asteroid in a dramatic feat of engineering, granting it a gravity of 0 0.3 Gs. Consisting of tens of thousands of kilometers of tunnels, the asteroid houses millions of inhabitants in quarters lit by false suns and reeking of manufactured scents. You know that the uh, the top levels of Ceres are long corridors wrapping around the outer edge of the station, uh, topped by a dome that shows an approximation of the sky, meant to comfort visitors and residents alike. Many belters grow um, up here um, to adulthood, staring up at the site, uh, meant to replicate something that they've never actually seen. Only the rich and gainfully employed live up near this faux sunlit area. Um, the rest live deep within the rocks, walking on dirt-strewn ground in a world lit by neon and sputtering lamps. So that kind of is the a little bit of gist of series and the location that you're currently in and because you went through the back service way um, you are very much greeted with I mean busy people as soon as you leave the docking station to head out towards where civilization would be you are met with just again the these this the sense of sense of machine of, of oil and grease and soot and dirt and just stuff that probably isn't incredibly healthy to be breathing in. The air is thick. There are definitely dense particles in it. You can hear some people coughing occasionally. Others are wearing masks if they're fortunate enough to have them. Um, but otherwise, it is a relatively crowded area you could see all of these little streets and shops along the way lit by neon lights um, patrons walking in and out wearing all sorts of colorful and um, just kind of like worn out garb though um, clearly some folks like off to like the one side you, you could check out pretty easily where like OPA folks are kind of you know loitering um, in certain shops there are you know, brightly lit bars, um, places to gamble, and you are looking for hats. There is absolutely a hatier. There's a word for a hat making person. Oh, I mean, I didn't need that. I, I don't care what it was. It's a hattie or now. A, is it, is it, is it, right. Is it a haberdash? Is it a hat for dash? No, it's is not. Is it a hat for No, I think haberdash it's is for like fancy clothes. It's a hattie This is fucking space, okay? It's whatever I want it to be. I'm just looking for a raggedy old hat. This is it. <laughs> Cheapest well, hat there is. Uh, the, 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 the first hat store that you find uh, are not cheap. These are, these are relatively well-made and they don't look like would not have gone in there then. Definitely cool. would but not. But you go see in there. it. It's there. Yeah, I, okay? see, I see it there there's, for sure. There's an old dude who looks like a gnome and he's just, you know, making hats. I don't I don't know. His name is Geppetto, okay? And you are able to find just a, a, a regular clothing store, um, like Paxon. It's it's this version of Paxon. It looks just, just like Paxon. There's hats in Paxon. Just grabbed a hat, the cheapest looking one. <laughs> Probably had nothing. I don't want anything on it. Just even if it's ripped up, I'll pay for it and I'll put my hood over it. And then, this, you know, what? Do I have a hat. I had a hat. I don't know. Wait, no I got a hat. Where am I? Oh, thanks. Boom. There you go. Put on a hat. And Perfect. Just go like this and then start walking around. 
It just says like TM in like Tyco manufacturing letters. Is that like Captain America? It's just like no, him. I just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's me. <laughs> I'm America. <laughs> Looks just like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Fucking Rhino just, Paxel. Looks, looks like Captain America with a hat on. It's the weirdest shit. <laughs> it's, it's Captain America. Oh my god, I love y'all. Uh, <laughs> I think to find your fucking hat. I think Rex steps out and like, oh, the scrubbers make the air taste gross. I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> Where to, boss man? Right. Um. Well, according to you all, I'm dead. So where would a dead me go? I don't even know where uh, alive you would go. Probably. What the hell was that? That was a joke. Oh. Well. That's good. This is where we're supposed to meet for the speech. I would very much love to find out if the Martian ambassador has uh, sent word here. I mean, that's, uh, what, that's what a live me would want to do. So naturally, um, dead me would like to get a drink at the nearest alcohol dispensing location. Something fine, if I could. <clears throat> what I meant to say was, I think the uh, the whiz he took over the ship pretty quick. The compass rose. Maybe he could find out. He's good with the computers. Well, is that true? Are you good with computers? Eli, that's you. Hmm? What? Oh, Are God. you good with the computers? I'm good with computers, Eli says, in the tone of like having heard the way that sentence was structured and being like, why are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Can I perhaps interest you in some freelance work? Depends on if it's interesting. Well, I'd like to see any information that you might be able to pull up on the Martian ambassador that was sent here to have uh, to meet with me. Wasn't she dead? <laughs> About that. She may be dead or someone walking around us her may be dead. I'm not quite sure. And that's what I would like to have you find uh, out. Do you me. want me to find in, do, Oh, so do you want me to find information on the dead Martian ambassador? or the live Martian ambassador imposter? Because those are two different things. Um, my answer is yes, I want both. That'll cost double then. And so I will pay double. Fair enough. As the, the two of you are, are negotiating, um, you kind of see like, uh, people lift out their like comms devices or their their cell phones uh essentially um and like bloop, 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 bloop. you kind of hear like this this common sound of people receiving a notification of some sort um and everybody kind of looks down to uh to see what goes on on their phone and in some of like the banners that are just kind of zipping by um where like advertisements and news tickers are uh, there are big um neon blue messaging uh that flips over to red and you just see the words wanted senator adrian cox of earth and it starts relaying all of this information for crimes of murder espionage etc etc listen among the dead is a daisy <laughs> Adrian, as you look up and you see this, um, you know, your picture is now being flashed everywhere. 
um, it's on people's phones. If you look over to like, you know, some kids that are kind of, you know, just hanging out over, you know, off to the side who are on their phones and kind of like they look off and they're trying to see if, you know, somebody matches the description. Um, but most people just go, eh, and put their phones away. We're going to end there. Oh, you fucking asshole. For tonight. There's two minutes left, Gnome. Mm-hmm. It's two minutes left in the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, all, all Cox has to say, see, this is, oh no, I'm going to have to change my hair. <laughs> if I would have seen it on one of the uh, like big banners, I'd be like, good luck. <laughs> no. I have one important question for you. Mm-hmm. Because you made us write this five, four, three, two, one document about our characters. Mm-hmm. Apparently, a year ago, twenty twenty, Mike had some balls, and one of the NPCs that I'm acquainted with is Anderson Dawes. Do I know where <laughs> to find him <laughs> on series? <laughs> I mean. Yeah, why would you not be? Perfect. Like, you ask the right people, they'll be oh, able to tell you where, to end great. Where, where he is. Cool. <laughs> Getting you a new haircut and a tattoo. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I absolutely think not sick. <laughs> well, welcome back. This was Ooh. episode three officially of uh, our amazing Expanse RPG uh, called Entanglement. And boy, is it. Uh, so let's go around, do our introductions, get the hell out of here, do our long awaited after show that you guys can get exclusively on our Patreon. Link for that down below. Uh, we'll start with the enigmatic noir enigma himself. Hey. I'm not getting a fucking tattoo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, or YouTube as the Noir Enigma. And you can find me on Instagram and TikTok as Noir Enigma. Um, yeah, this this was a this was a blast. I'm glad that we're uh, we're back. Um, on uh, Thursday afternoons, you can catch my show, The Lonely Throne. Uh, we just had our season finale last week. Um, Tomorrow, I should be on Chromatic Chimera for their uh, blood, uh, bloody portrait game, which is Zyhander. Uh, and on Saturday morning, you can catch me over on Critical Misses, where we have morning ritual. Our guest this week is going to be Abria. Uh, so please check that out. And I have a bunch of other stuff, but that's me. <laughs> Sweet. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Uh, we'll jump right over to uh, John. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? Oh, I'm John. Uh, I play the science nerd in this group. Well, one of them. There's a couple, it turns out. Um, but uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ryamasa, R-Y-0-M-A-S-A on Twitter. Uh, that's about it, really. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not doing a lot right this moment. There's a couple things coming up that I can't talk about just yet, but look forward to announcements because we've got a couple of games coming up in the future that I'm super excited for. Nice. Um, yeah, but that otherwise you can find me here on Entanglement Thursdays 8 to 10 p.m. on Unmade Gaming. Uh, and then eventually, probably starting in February, I'm thinking, I'm going to start streaming on my own channel, Ryomasa on Twitch as well. A little bit of uh, the games I'm currently playing, which I guess is Destiny, uh, Destiny 2, Red Dead Online, and Final Fantasy XIV. So just chilling out, having some good times. Sweet. Uh, we'll go right over uh, to Juan Carlos. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? Hey y'all. Uh, well, I'm just Juan Carlos, and I'm at Sombero on Twitter, and uh, I do this. That that's it. But Perfect. it's it's enough for me because it's a fun game. Hell yeah! It um, is. Yeah. So you know, I'm like I'm gonna keep doing this, and that's it. Season three uh, or season two? Season two, 2022. Uh, mm, and last but not least, Gnome. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? Why did you say that like I was in trouble? When aren't that, you? No. I, I think you hang out with Eris a lot. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, my name is Nomi. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. And I am here Tuesdays and Thursdays in space. You can also catch me uh, over on Roll20 on Mondays in space. And uh, come February, you can catch me on my own channel uh, on Fridays in space. And then I also have a morning talk show called Gnome Brew, where we wake up with Eris Savad 
and talk TTRPGs and just whatever random shit that we need to help us wake up in the morning. Have a cup of coffee with us on Gnome Brew Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we'll be there tomorrow? Is there one yeah, tomorrow? I think we're doing a Void Brew tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well then, yeah. uh, we're going to get out of here. We're going to go do our after show. If you guys want access to that, again, link down below for the Patreon. It's only at the $5 tier, so jump in there and get it. You won't uh, be disappointed. Uh, so, for more churns, burns, and uh, and heartbreaks. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for more entanglement. So from all of us to you, bye-bye. <laughs>